I know, I, I, I don't often do graphic cards reviews. I'm, I'm more into the motherboard side of things and building stuff, but once in a while the market provides, you know, uh, opportunities. Um, to, to make things more, more interesting, that's exactly what NVIDIA has done, releasing their super lineup of video cards and promising not only greater performances, as they usually do, but in the same time, reducing price tags? Did I hear that right? It's been five years. We've been the subject of constant gaming torture, inflated prices, and finally, prices are going down, I, I had to take a look at it and I already hear your poor little voices hyperventilating already, saying, Laurent, Laurent, tell us what you think. Well, today we are reviewing the excellent GeForce RTX 4070 Super 12 Juventus 3X OC, a graphic card not afraid of long, very long names. Now, do you know what else MSI is not afraid of? Well, making the graphic card small and light enough so they can be held single-handedly. Because all the best things in life all come single-handed. Starting with the obvious. We're dealing with what is probably the most compact full-size 4070 Super card out there today. It is slimmer in every way and lighter than all of its competition, including its own so-called slim sibling. The logic board is made of eight PCB layers, which does provide all the signal insulation a PCI 4.0 product needs to remain stable and solid for the ages to come. Output-wise, well, nothing groundbreaking here. We have our premium 3 display ports, as well as our HDR-enabled HDMI, and exactly the same standards we observed all along the 4000 series. The real question here is, despite its more compact form factor, can it um, perform as well as its competition. Well, for that, uh, we are going to have to open it and see what's hiding under those fans. The 4070 Super is powered by NVIDIA brand new AD104-350 die, which now features a total of 7,168 CUDA cores from 5,888 seen on the RTX 4070, the card the Super is meant to replace. Most noticeably, we go from 184 4th Gen Tensor Core processors to 224 for a much more effective DLSS application and a sizable jump in terms of third generation ray tracing cores going from 46 to 56 for better real tracing handling. But it doesn't stop there since the GPU L2 cache itself has also been bumped from 36 to 48 megabyte, which more than anything we mentioned so far will impact the performances of our 4070 Super. And the point to retain here is that not only is this card more powerful than the 4070 it's meant to replace, obviously, but it's getting extremely close to the RTX 4070 Ti specs. Our GPU is powered by 950 amps direct power stages, seven of which are GPU centric. That, that's a rather modest 350 amps for an equally modest overclock, if we can even call it that. And to be honest, it is quite a bit less than what its slim sibling can output. Additionally, I'd like to, to note that we cannot but be impressed by the fact that a 104 350 die can run fully on such a modest VRM. A great example on how much more power efficient is this new die. Finally, memory-wise, what well, we do remain with the same 12 gigabyte worth of DDR6X, serviced by a logical 192-bit wide bus. Now, how does it translate in real game experience? Um, to give us an accurate yet a short overview of what it can do, I've selected three different um, 3D engines, which are all focused on different aspects of today's gaming. First, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 running on an optimized IW 9.0 graphical engine, which is laser focused on frames per second and is highly prone to DLSS improvement, which makes sense being a first person shooter. Next, we'll go with Cyberpunk 2077, the perfect crossroad between FPS and action game with its ray tracing rich universe. And finally, we will test it on the new Alan Wake 2, an horror adventure game which focuses heavily 
heavily on a graphical rich environment and probably the most taxing engine on any GPU out there. Unsurprisingly, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 fares exceptionally well in a 1080 resolution with a very stable maxed out 250 frames per second with DLSS turned on. Now, depending on the map, you will see little or no differences whether you have ray tracing turned on or off simply because Modern Warfare 3 purposely limits ray traced objects to preserve its high FPS output. In 2K, the 4070 Super uh, finds its sweet spot, in my opinion, giving a still very high FPS in the LSS mode and let us enjoy a very refined premium graphical experience. Experience. The 4K setting is still very playable, but you'll start noticing some real slowdowns and longer lags on busy scenes, and that will affect the quality of your gameplay, obviously. On Cyberpunk 2077's Red Engine, the cards react rather well. In 1K, it peaks at 225 frames per second with DLSS on and ray tracing off, but since we are in a much more ray traced environment, turning on ray tracing will divide the game FPS by about 2, either in 2K or 4K. Again, 2K being the middle point to achieve a high FPS count and a rich graphical experience. Finally, Alan Wake's 2 North Light engine stays true to its repute and murders the 4070 Super in about every native resolution. And to be transparent here, uh, when I mention a resolution, I make a point not to use optimized resolution as some reviewers do, but the true DP count. Ray tracing on this game is massively used and it will shrink your FPS rendering into single digits outputs, which is absolutely atrocious to watch. And in all and for all, uh, we've seen that the RTX 4070 Super was very close to the TI in terms of specs. Well, obviously it is confirmed also by uh, the gaming outputs. This is nothing less than a 4070 TI for $200 less, so, which is always very exciting. The old question is that, is a compact size going to impact the thermal abilities of this video cause? And obviously I took a closer look to it for you. Once cracked open, we realize that the card is more radiator and fans than anything else really. And we have this beautiful interlaced two-part thin radiators held together by long eight millimeter wide copper pipes. The harvested heat is quickly exhausted by three large 120 mm silent 100,000 hour certified ball bearing fans, all of which can brass up a lot of hair. And in short, despite being slimmer than slim, I have found no thermal issues. After an hour long stress test, the card showed a very cautious 60 degrees Celsius even on the very back of its GPU PCB. And I think what's important here is that MSI have, have really shown and demonstrated that you do not need those massive cards. Manufacturers have been trying to sell us, I mean, in form factor, trying to tell us the bigger, the more powerful, and then the more expensive. It's more of a marketing move. Uh, uh, rather than something that's going to have a positive output on your thermals. In conclusion, the MSI RTX 4070 Super 12 Juventus 3 XOC will cost you about $630 before taxes, which is, well, $30 cheaper than its 4070 predecessor at launch price. Um, how refreshing to say. Um, I almost want to be emotional. So not only does it outperform it at every turn, but it's not even fair to the RTX 4070 Super to be compared to its RTX 4070 predecessor because it's so much more closer to the 4070 Ti in terms of specs and performances. I mean, it's practically a TI, there's no other words for it. And I'll remind you that the TI is anywhere between 100 to 150 US dollar more expensive than the 4070 Super. That's a lot of 4070 talk. I hope you, you're, you're following me there. This is the reason why I wanted to review this graphic card in particular. Me, Laurent, the motherboard master reviewer. It is because it was worth me spending some good loving time in its company. And to tell you that it is probably the best mid upper range gaming card I have seen in years, which actually is worse its price tag. I still can't believe I can say that. And where your money begs you to be.